Okay, here goes. Good morning, everybody. Wow. That's a zero out of ten. That's a bad one. So the voice is recovering. I think uh, I got to a decent spot on Monday night. Now we're recording this on Tuesday morning. So this is being recorded on Tuesday morning. Uh, hopefully it got better. Hopefully I was able to get out to the Steve, which I'm worried about. But um, Monday, this is coming off Monday's show. Monday we went nine wide. I just want people to remember. Now, there were only 28 people listening at the time we went nine wide. But that is, what do they tell you about callers, Grant? They tell you that only like 2% of people call. Yeah. Okay. So I had 33% of people giving interaction. That 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 should be that 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 should be that should be uh yeah, it's Grant Bills and it's Paul Imig, ladies and gentlemen. Better call Paul. Better call Paul. Yes. Oh, I, I love I love producing when it was Paul's day to be on. Why is that? Oh, because every morning you'd, you'd text like you needed to completely change your time. <laughs> Did I really do that? Paul was scheduled for, what, 106 all the time on Bill's show? Uh, and he'd be like, hey, I got to do 1130. And Joe would always go, oh, it makes got to change again. And he was so he was always so worried that, you know, when these radio stations set a rundown and then one of their interviewers interviews change and they're like, how are we going to tell our people that are expecting <laughs> Paul at one, that it's one twenty now. <laughs> no one. Yeah. A fuck. I can't control it. I sound like the fish on little mermaid. Which one? The one from under the sea when he goes, guess who's going beyond the plate. Oh yeah, that's a very yeah. The deep is this the, the deep. classic Little Mermaid or the new woke? Well, no, actually... we are we are watching a lot of Little Mermaid lately in the house, mm -hmm. which I had never seen up until really. Time. Oh yeah, I like I like it. It's it's of kind of like a poorly written movie. All right, give me your give me your analysis. Why? What? Where's where's the, the plot holes? Uh, the pacing is just very like. Odd. Okay. Oh, and I watched Mario movie. How so was good. it? So good. Well, I so then I looked. I was like, this is pretty decent. So I looked at reviews, yeah. and uh, there was like, how can you have a movie that has no plot? I really strongly disagreed with the reviews. Strongly disagreed. I thought the movie was good, but it my was kid good. was scared the whole time that Bowser because Mario was like. Mario, they they put Mario through the gauntlet. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, he can't, he keeps getting his ass kicked over and over and over. Mm -hmm. And then he finally won, and then we had to like stop one day and then pick it up the next day. And then he was very excited, and now he's super into Mario. Oh, good. Did he finish the movie or no? Oh yeah. Okay. He just had to kind of settle into the fact that Mario gets his gets himself knocked around a little bit. Well, he was he's happy to know that. He won. Oh, yes. So, I, I don't think he quite understands in movies yet the good guys always win. Uh, yeah. Not in Little Big League. Right. Ken Griffey well, Jr. I would argue that, yeah, Griffey was the good guy in that movie, but. Yeah. Of yeah, all the movies, um, all the examples that you pulled, you pulled Little Big League? I feel like uh -huh. those. That's okay. the first one that comes to mind where the good guys, quote unquote, good guys don't win. All right, all right. You know, you know what was really good? The Turtles movie, man. Oh yeah, fantastic. And that has like ninety-seven percent Rotten Tomatoes, which for that type of movie to be that high is pretty cool. See, I'll never. I I'm so high on our Turtles one, two from the eighties. Mm-hmm. No, you'll love it. It's, I mean, because Seth Rogen is pretty much our age. He has the same nostalgia for the turtles that we do. 
So I, I thought he really, really did a great job bringing justice to our childhoods uh, with the Turtles. Do you remember how bad Turtles 3 was when they went to Japan? You know, we were like seven. So I don't think I watched it after that. It's bad. It was like it was like Major League Three. Turtles yeah, see, three. I have an odd affinity for Major League Three, no, recognizing it's garbage, like for real. But I enjoyed like the minor league, and it was clearly not Major League One and Two. But for what it was, I mean, it's like Back to the Future Three. You know, like it's the forgotten. I feel, I feel this way about Blues Brothers Two Thousand. I know it's not good, but I get a kick out of it, and I like the music, anyways. I never saw it. I, can I ask you guys a question? I was thinking of how to frame this as a, but this is like a perfect segue into it. I was thinking of how to ask this, and mm-hmm, but I can't. There's no mm-hmm for it. So I'm going to just bring it as our like our, our pre-discussion. On Monday night, all of the people who are about in the age group of me and Bart absolutely ate up the fact that Steph Curry sang with Paramore, which is a great band and Steph Curry like rocked it out. He knew all the words and he sang it really well. My question for you is if you could pick one athlete who you enjoy, maybe it's your favorite athlete or whatever, and you could put them into a pop culture thing. Maybe it's a performance on stage. Maybe it's a a movie. Fast question. Maybe it's a TV show. I just kind of curious what would come to mind for you that you would enjoy. So like Bart and I, we saw Giannis at AEW. Like that was any Giannis. I would, I would have him guest star on elf. Alf, A L F, alien life form, or yeah, Alf, Alf, A L F. Okay, he'd be like, "What is this stupid thing?" And he'd like beat it up, <laughs> tickle it. Giannis on Alf was not the answer I was expecting. Sure, um, but I thought maybe there'd be like, what was Greg? Steph singing? What song? Misery business. Oh, what I didn't meant to brag. But I got it where I want it now. Well, in other uh, concert cameo news, I saw one of the Danettes was on stage with Darius Rucker the other night. That was a big. That was a big thing in the Dan Patrick space. I don't know if you guys ever follow that. No, no. I don't know. I don't know what my pop culture crossover would be. I'm gonna have to think about that one. If you come back to it later, that'd be great. Well, let's ask a question, and then I, I'm not quite woefully yet, but we can ask a question here. Okay, so we do mm hmm. Or mm hmm. Or mm hmm. Um, let's start with Rashawn Gary coming back, which made me want to ask you two fellas if you had to put your money on one player to be the Packers MVP on defense this year, it would be Rashawn Gary. Mm hmm. Oh. Or mm hmm. Packers defensive MVP, all your money's got to go on one guy. It would be Rashawn Gary. Mm-hmm. Or mm-mm. I am going to say mm-mm, and I am going to buy into the Jair Alexander hype. That was my alternative possible answer for this, but yes. Say I more. We may have seen the clip where he said, uh, oh, yeah, you know, who I like to watch is 23 on the Packers, okay? I think that Jair was falling into the trap where he – like, I don't want to call him Willie Adamas. Like, uh oh, uh oh. Or like his best plays were coming when they were already getting their ass kicked. Ah, oh, sure. At least in my perception. Um, and he would like celebrate and like, but then if you look at like Joe Barry almost destroyed this man's career for the two Viking games, and I know that the second game they were playing some dog shit guy Mannion. But they weren't like they just like you play 15 yards off Jefferson, of yeah. course, they have 200 yards, yeah. And then they have him follow Jefferson, he does much better. So I think Jair is what that defense exactly what they need right now. They need someone that is telling them that he's good, that can follow up with it, that can then get the other players to believe they're maybe a little better than they are. So I would go with Jair. Grant Bills, Rashawn Gary's back. He'll be the Packers' defensive MVP this year. Mm-hmm or mm-mm. Uh, I'll say mm-mm, and I didn't really know exactly who I was going to say. I'll probably say Jair. I just – I don't want to be the anti-Rashawn Gary guy. Just sometimes I feel like I like I have yeah. to be. 
We've yeah, all you've been, been. you've been that in the past. I remember. I don't put that on me, Paul. I mean, I don't. <laughs> he's fine. He's good. But I don't know. And last year he got hurt, which is unfair to him. And no, I'm I'm very high on Rashawn Gary. I want to make that. Clear. I like the guy. Um, it's just what is this year five? Yep. And we're kind of waiting for that one dominant season end to end where he is the guy that we've expected him to be and the guy that everyone says is going to be. And he hasn't done it yet. So until I see it, I, I, I'm going to say, mm-mm. I'll say Jair, I guess. Who are even like some other, you know, Kenny Clark and like Kenny if, Clark. If you're saying like legit team defensive MVP, I mean, we, it's not. I mean, is Quay Walker going to have some explosive second year? I mean, he's an athletic marvel. I don't know if he's going to be defensive team MVP if the team is good or if the defense was it, is good. Uh, was, was it Paul Brettel that was telling me he thought Devontae Wyatt was playing well? But, and, I mean, uh, you're talking a guy who didn't play last year to being, you know, it, it doesn't make it not possible. But Van Ness seems to be, like, getting people all groined up. Groined up. Maybe some Rasul. I don't know if he's your team. If he's team defensive MVP, who are the starting safeties in Week One? What's the what's the read? Ford and Savage. Ford and Savage. Yeah, I have seen a lot of good things about Devontae Wyatt. Hearing a lot of hype, as Cone says, I'm hearing good things. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm just we don't. This. this show does not have boots on the ground at camp. I, uh, I, I just see a lot of tweets that he's taken that next step, perhaps in year two. I, I don't know. It's great that Rashawn Gary's off the pup list already, and it looks like he's actually going to, he's coming along and progressing really nicely because you know yeah. so we assume that players are going to come back and and it'll be like nothing ever happened, and that's a hundred percent not always the case. You know, mm-hmm. players like David Bakhtiari. So see, he's coming off pup. That's a great sign. But we've yet to see him have a truly dominant season as the number one edge rusher on a good defense. And I feel like a lot of people have just assigned that to him. And I have to be the the hater for pointing out that that has not happened yet. So I should have looked this up. I think the answer is no. Rashawn Gary has not signed a contract extension, right? Mm-mm. So he is unrestricted free agent at the end of the season, right? I feel like here's what's going to happen. Who do the Packers play like week six or seven? They're going to have a good defensive performance. Sean Gary's going to have a good game. And then that week it's going to be announced that they came to a contract extension. Don't you okay. think Don't you think that's the most likely way for this to go? Uh, well, they're not letting him go. Yeah. He's not reaching free agency. Unless the, the, the Eric Bledsoe, Drew Holiday, midseason type extension that boosts everyone's yeah. – team a lift. I think that's probably where I'd put my money. Well, yeah. I mean, I'm just looking at this, at his, his spot track data. I mean, yeah, in seven months, he's an unrestricted free agent. So, and he'll be, he's 26 years old this year, coming off the ACL. I mean, obviously this is, what, a nine-month recovery window for his torn ACL, which is bonkers. Like, that's like Adrian, that's like Adrian Peterson circa 2015 Remember when Adrian Peterson had like the quickest ACL recovery in pro sports that or Brian Bulaga even, who is just a house coming back from ACL tears. He would show up week one and it looked like nothing ever happened. Where did Brian Bulaga go to college? Iowa. Iowa. Oh, Brian Bulaga, Iowa. <laughs> he had this he had this, you know, long tenured Packers career. And I think most people would most remember him for being Brian Bulaga, Iowa. An original Big Ten school a Big Ten school before all the riffraff from the West Coast was coming in. He was a member of the proper Big Ten back in the day. Do you think the – hold on, let me uh, pause myself again. On the Dan Shaney YouTube stream, Dan, you can watch me cough many times. I will do that now while muting myself. <coughs> <clears throat> Fuck, I forgot to mute myself. Do you think that – uh, Nikhil Harry is being rumored to wear 28. Did the Vikings ever retire that number for Adrian Peterson? Should they have retired it? Yeah. God, I love number retirement talk. 
Okay, so wait, you know, can I can I pause you for a second, Bart, and can we answer that question? Well, I swear to you, you didn't know this, and I, I didn't know what you were going to say. My next topic for you, this is based off a of Bart Winkler tweet. The Brewers should, reti- should retire CC Sabathia's number. I shit you not, this was the next topic. What a beautiful well, segue. So we should answer Adrian Peterson, but then we're talking like jersey retirement talk, number retirement talk. Well, let's I'm- get into all that right after these words from Happy Place Hemp. HappyPlaceHemp.com, where, you know, I talk about the website a lot, but you really you really should get in your car and scoot your ass down to Muskego, right on the border there of New Berlin and Muskego. Walk into the building. You see the the, the background. I'll, I'll throw the background up again on my Dan Shaney YouTube stream. But you walk in, you see the giant night. You see all the great Happy Place Hemp products and... Uh, and the little thing dings, and then out emerges either Chris or Rob, if they're not hard at work creating more of the great product for you. And you say, uh, what, what, what should I like? I need something that's going to help me sleep, or I need something like I'm tired of driving to Illinois to, to get what I'm looking for. And, and they'll, they'll tell you everything you need to know. So you could do that. You could just go on the website also, happyplacehemp.com. But promo code BART works in both locations, 25% off, and do check it out. Now, I have been at Happy Place Hemp while people have come into the building and they say, where did you hear about us? And then they say, Drew and KB. So one time they'll say BART Winkler show when I'm there, but that has not happened yet. Brian No sent us is what people are saying this week. It was it what? Brian No sent us this week. That's what people will be saying at Happy Place Hemp. He's back on again? I think he's doing Zabe's show. Jesus. Sorry to interrupt you. I just, sorry. I'm sorry. Brian No, huh? I don't want to say anything bad about him because he writes for Barrett. And, I, you know, if I ever want to be profiled again. I'm Why, still, how come I'm not? I'm an out of work radio guy. Why am I not writing for Jason Barrett's website? I'm still a Barrett virgin. I sent them things. and I was like, hey, this would make a good story. Oh, Never they don't. Happened. It's a busy. I mean, the, what's going on with this Orioles broadcaster has just got everyone. Oh, up. yeah. We're all, well, all once every play by play guy had to give their opinion. Same opinion. I, thank God. Thank you for pointing that out because I was pissed off looking at Twitter this morning. Sorry, uh, happy place out. I shouldn't have interrupted. Now, when this episode posts, maybe that got resolved. That's a very good point, Bart. That's a very good because point. Because I, I sure as hell won't go back and edit it. Happyplacehemp.com, promo code Bart. This is the Bart Winkler Show. Uh, you may be enjoying us via the audio podcast. We are also on the uh, YouTube, Dan Shaney YouTube. Thanks to Dan Shaney Insurance. Grant Bills is here, Paul Emig's here, and we want to talk Jersey retirement. We did cover this a little bit on Monday. Oh, you did? Okay. But I, 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 I wouldn't, I'm happy to answer it again. Uh, as far as Adrian Peterson, I don't know if, like, I'd have to ask a Viking fan, but you don't sit on it for five years and then give it to Nikhil Harry. Yeah, like... Treat it like, you know, the other thing that's cool with jerseys is like 88, the Cowboys never retire. But they give it to their guy. Mm-hmm. Like Pearson, Irving, uh, although some people call him Michael Irvin. I've heard it both ways. Dez, CD. It's like I'm the Cowboy receiver that wears 88. They've established that like some college programs do. That's cool if, if you're going to do it that way. It would be super lame if C.D. Lamb was like, oh, Michael, can I wear your number? That's why I give, like, fucking Rodgers, I give him so much credit for not wearing 12 there because it's retired for Joe Namath. And Joe is going to let him wear it. <clears throat> mm-hmm. you know, the fact that Rodgers is a retirement, like, respecter of number guy, it's tough for me. Do you respect retirement? Do you respect wood? I respect, respect retirement. It is cool that uh, Rogers is wearing eight. I don't know what to think about Adrian Peterson. I was not expected to. I, I I did not expect to talk about this this morning. I don't know how I feel. 
I love when jerseys get retired. I love that the Rays retired 12 for Wade Boggs. Because he was there for a year. <laughs> I love the early Rays that had like every Fred McGriff was there somehow. Wade Boggs was there. We I did Barry, were we we both happened to go to a Rays game that year, right? I did. I think yeah, I remember you saying you also did. I went in I went I was there at BJ Upton's first game. Wow, that's a name. I was yeah, yeah I, well, what was their debut year? I was there like I wasn't there their debut year. I was there in like, Oh, you weren't. Okay. Okay. I was there the debut year. Grant was two years old. Yeah. Sure. Was that late nineties? You don't know my age. What year was this? Yeah. They debuted, I think, in ninety eight. Ninety eight. That sounds uh, right. Yeah, that's my that's my birth year. Holy <laughs> Christmas. Yeah. I've always felt a strong connection to that franchise for for that reason. Felt like yeah. we're one and the same. We came into the earth very similar times. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so Bart, I don't know what you said on the Monday live, but let's go to Grant. I'm curious what his take is on CC Sabathia. Did he? It, can a half? Can a player who was as impactful as any half season rental can ever possibly? Well, no, be Grant's a great guy to talk to about this because this this is what I got mad about, and this is what I realized is that the way I feel about maybe the 08 or 11 Brewers is how some people feel about the 82 Brewers that I always make fun of. Yeah. Grant, you would have been 10. So yep. that's still, I think that's still what it resonated. Like CC Sabathia for you would have been like the 92 Brewers for me when I was eight, maybe. Or maybe you didn't give a fuck because you lived in Western Wisconsin and you guys are all poser Brewer fans. What the hell is this? I remember my dad being <laughs> Just super kidding. amped. And I remember people being amped. Baseball is a sport I feel like it takes folks a little bit longer to get into. And when I say folks, I mean kids. Like it's easy to watch a Packer game when you're little with a big group of people and kind of understand what's going on. Especially When I was five years old, I came home from school and watched baseball every day. Well, okay. Well, I, I went out and played outside. Okay. I, <laughs> I had no friends. Played with my siblings. Uh, didn't have any friends on our street. We lived on a, a small county road. We'd come home. We'd play outside. We'd play make believe. You know, we. I, I took a little bit longer to get into baseball, so I remember 2008. But I don't think it carries the weight for me. I mean, you had what 25 years of no playoffs that it had just been stewing. So I think you had that background and that build up where I didn't. Um, but I remember CC. I remember, I remember all of that. I, it's just probably not as powerful for me. I don't know how I feel about the number retirement. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a Braun guy. Yes, we should retire Braun's number because of what he meant to the team, because of what he brought to the team and to the franchise. And I guess the same is true for CeCe, even though he's only here for like two months. So maybe I'm a retire CeCe's number guy too. I have to work through this. Well, no, CeCe's number should not realistically be retired okay. but i would i i would celebrate if it was i Where? think he, for what he did and if he would have thrown that no hitter i mean maybe that changes things mm -hmm. but he came here he was a complete he wasn't just like it was it was the organization showing a different type of strategy mm -hmm. it was you're, if you're retiring the number for CC, you're retiring it for everyone that was on the team. You're retiring mm -hmm. it for Doug Melvin. You're retiring it for breaking the drought. You're retiring it for that summer when Brewers baseball like got out of the doldrums of the fucking shitty '90s thing and the you know Alex Gonzalez. 2000 strike a 200 strike you you got out of it and you brought a city together for the first time like that in 26 years you i always thought that you're retiring it for more than cc you're retiring it to acknowledge what that team meant and then they they buoyed out you know the next couple of years they were competitive 2011 was a great year you know then they got shitty again and then you know now this era but to go back to Braun, like Braun was there for that. And then he was there for the next part, the golden age of Brewers baseball. Braun's number should absolutely be retired. 
I think they're going to Jim Gantner him where, cause he won't be in the hall of fame. So Jim, they, they, the only numbers they ever tired are people in the hall of fame, but nobody's <laughs> worn Jim Gantner's number. And, I would say, oh, and, and when I talked about this on Monday, Brett and Tosa was like, fuck Jim Gantner, <laughs> which I didn't know was a thing. He said he was the most mediocre brewer ever. That got way too much hype. I might have to challenge back and say Rob Deere. Rob Deere was not that good. He was, but he Dude, looked like Andrew Chafin. So Rob Deere has his own district next to the Pfizer Forum. That is looked, true. Fuck, I forgot about that. That he's already got his thing. You can't have you can't have Lambo Field. Yeah, and then also be on the. I'm sorry. No, no, it's a different. So Rob Rob Deere can't be on the Mount Rushmore because there's a Deer district. Exactly. This is this is yeah. This is very obvious. Yeah. So how many brewers would you have to name? Like you're writing the brewers book, you know, the, 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 the entire history of the team. Or you could say like, how many Mount Rushmore heads would you need before you put CCs? Like in terms of impact as a brewer, memories of big brewer moments, the overall story. I don't know. I think you would go down a ways because it's such really, a, I, it's a different thing. Maybe I was just the perfect age, you know, so 23 no, because I, I would say, like, I'd go Yount, Molitor. Sure. And then I'd say Braun. And then I'd think of, like, Fielder. Fielder. And then I would think of, you know, who are some of the, then I'd think of, who are some of those other guys from, I'd th- ah, Vukovic, Fingers, um, Gorman Thomas. I'd start naming those guys. And then I'd come back and I'd think, ah, oh, Yelich has been good. And then I'd think, oh, fuck, that summer was CC. That's what it would be. But still, I think, I mean, even though you're just doing like a, an exercise there, you still named CC in the top 10. I think I fast forwarded to him. I, I was just thinking I, I've not done like a, a list, but to me, I, I you know, again, it's a lot of this is like point in your life. I, I remember, you know, I was born in 84. They last made the playoffs in 82. My right. whole life, I had to hear about the 82 Brewers. Yeah. while watching some shitty fucking teams. Yep. And then the one year they were good in 92, they didn't make the playoffs, even though they won 92 games because only two teams made the playoffs. Then they were dog shit in the 90s. Then baseball well, went on strike. Right, then I right. hated baseball. Then I came back to baseball because Miller Park opened. And then they were even somehow even shittier. And then <laughs> there was a whole period of the 2000s where Chris Magruder was like cloned seven straight years as outfielder de jure. And then CC Sabathia came along and finally justified me pouring 26 years of misery into yep. that god awful franchise. Totally, that's how I feel about it too. Um, and I just, I would just say, like, I do think the, the impact he pitched. Don't like he pitched every third day, right? In a contract year, like he should not for his. Now he ended up getting paid and everything worked out for him financially, but he should not oh, have the done. The Brewers that. were never going to resign him. They're like. Let's take this man. But he didn't have to do that, right? right? So, like, I know a lot of people's beef with Josh Hader was, like, that he would refuse to, like, do the multi-inning thing, and he was very focused on, like, his arbitration contract. It was very, like – and that's fine. I don't begrudge Hader or anyone else who's like, well, hey, this is my one chance to be a professional athlete and make a lot of money. CeCe Sabathia in a contract year on a new team said, like, screw it. I'm going to pitch every third day and risk injury. Uh, you know, and I think it helps that he's just a unique – body type it was his delivery was fantastic like it's just fun to watch so maybe i'm you know just was at the perfect age at that time to think of it in its own way where like if there's an afternoon game and sabathi was pitching i'm making sure that i have my food and my drink and i'm sitting down and at 109 i'm ready for that first pitch to happen because sabathi is at miller park about to pitch with the brewers um anyway he, no he shouldn't have his number retired but i do love that there's going to be this cc sabathia thing coming up um, Bart, what does it all entail? I know you saw the press release. What what's all in that coming up with Sabathia? He is gonna come and presumably throw the first pitch, and I deleted that email. Well, you tweeted it though, right? I guess you could pull that up. Oh, here's the email. Uh, there's gonna be a pregame acknowledgement. The first twenty thousand fans will get some poster. Um Basically, it's that picture from the Journal Sentinel, right? Like the yeah, the iconic photo. 
See, this is how you spend a Friday night at the ballpark. You honor CC Sabathia. You don't bring Chesty LaRue in and fucking. <laughs> Terrible. CC uh, Sabathia should have a statue at the very least. That iconic yell, that should be immortalized in bronze. I love that. Even if his number is not up in the. They're not really rafters, up on the concrete beam in the outfield, even if his number doesn't go there. Remember when I was arguing with Tim Shea about how Ryan Braun's number should be retired, and Tim said, well, the Brewer system is all the players have had to make at least one World Series. I think about that every goddamn day. In fact, <laughs> Tim brought that up. As That's what he said? Yes. It's not their system, but it's That's what Tim said. He's like, all those guys made at least one World Series. No, Tim, they made the one. They made the only one. They made that one. Well, Hank Aaron didn't make it with us. Yeah, he made it somewhere else. Ask Tim Shea about this. Tim, I would actually be genuinely but, Okay, so there you go. Hank Aaron's number is retired. Hank Aaron played two years with the Brewers. He won a World Series in Milwaukee in 1957, right? Uh, you're testing the history now. Yeah, sure. Sounds about right. Oh, so, did we retire Hank Aaron's number because of his career with the Braves? Probably partially. Yeah. Yeah. Well, then that's messed. The Bra- yeah. Well, we don't have that much to celebrate as a franchise. You know, we got to get it where we can get it. It's a little bit, maybe a little bit like, well, not a little, a very small amount like the Heat retiring Michael Jordan's number. It's like we were <laughs> this guy so much on a league-wide basis. Hank Aaron deserves his number being retired more than CeCe. But I don't know. I, I have a hard time. I have a hard, like the same way I'm like, aha, 82 Brewers, you know. It's still the Brewers. I These people that would – call in all the time and presumably they're all dead now but they were always like the braves we gotta honor the braves more man the braves left if the brewers leave and a new franchise comes back and like ryan Braun's the manager for two years and then he wears eight and then the milwaukee tigers Retire the number eight. It's like, why? That's you're, that's because he was a brewer? No, it's, this is a new thing. I think the I new know. baseball I, team. I understand team. people wanting to keep that connection because they were a great team, but even, and there should be some sort of memorial to Milwaukee Braves. I don't so, know that it should be at the Brewers Stadium. Hmm. I'm. This is a very controversially bad take for me, but I've always thought like, I don't know. I've gone to the new Braves stadium. Yeah. They have a behind home plate. They have this history of the franchise from Boston to Milwaukee to Atlanta. They have like, they do it better than we do it. We tack it against some wall and an exit. Nobody leaves out of. Oh, here's a bunch of baseballs. They have like, here's the, you know, they show everything. It's a lot it's a lot better. I I just have never felt the connection to the Braves. And I feel like it's I, I feel like the Brewers are forced to like be the ones to do it just because they're the new baseball club here when they'd rather not. Yeah. Uh, no, wasn't- no, no, no. I feel like you guys are either compelled by what I'm saying or don't give a fuck. No, I am com- compelled. Compelled. Yeah, I, not it's something I I've ever thought about before. Yeah, you have the context of having seen whatever, like the the Atlanta Braves memorial thing. Um, I don't. I've not seen that. Um, I don't have a strong opinion. I'm compelled by what you're saying. Not. I was very opinion. compelled. I thought it was very well spoken, Bart. Yeah, I understand that. Oh, Bart doesn't respect the Braves. That's not what I'm saying. I don't like that it's on Milwaukee. I mean, now now they got this wall of fame where it's like, God, if you played for the Milwaukee Braves for even half the time that CeCe was, 
we're going to bring back all your dead relatives and let them throw at the first pitch and put the See, I always I always take it one little <laughs> I always take it one little too far. There you go. Well, here here's a, another baseball one that I was not planning to ask, but I I'm going to go I'm going to ask it cuz I I think I'm surprised by what I think my answer is. Um since the Jose Ramirez v. Tim Anderson b- battle, um, Jose Ramirez's agent has posted a picture of Jose Ramirez in boxing gloves. I know the Guardians minor league team is doing a, a promotion where anyone named Tim gets to have free s- tickets to sit in the grass. That's the that's the that's the team. Like that's not like some random, you know, local club. It's a, an affiliate of the Guardians. Um, this has brought a lot of attention to baseball because especially because it's like two premier players, two star players, the Jose Ramirez knocking Tim Anderson on his ass and the memes that have come from it and all of the stuff that has come from it. This was good for the popularity of major league baseball. This is a, this is an oddly positive moment for the sport. Sport for the no, let me not say for the sport, but for the league. This was good for Major League Baseball. Mm hmm. Or mm hmm. Grant? Yeah, I was going to say, I think part of what has made baseball fun this year is you have these upstart teams like the Diamondbacks and the Orioles. Um, and I, I like obviously the, the Rays, and there's other, there's other sharp small market teams, but some of these teams, the Mariners, right, are trying to fight it and, and do it for the first time with these young, exciting teams. That's been really fun. Another part of why baseball has been fun this year is you have big market, really talented, really expensive teams that are flopping like the Mets and the Padres. And that's funny. And the White Sox aren't really the Mets and they aren't really the Padres, but they're kind of, they're a super talented team in a larger market, even though they play second fiddle in their own market to the Cubs and they're flopping and Tim Anderson getting knocked on his ass within 48 hours of that Jesse Rogers story coming out about how the White Sox are a mess. There's no rules in the dugout and you have relief pitchers sleeping through games. Like I, I just think the more reasons we have to talk about more teams, that's a good thing. The, the more teams that are, that are in my field of vision that I'm, I'm paying attention to and that I know something about, and I, I have a reason to, to think about them. That's good. And this summer baseball has been really good at that with Otani and with like the Orioles, a lot of these upstart teams, I just have a lot of reasons to pay attention to a lot of teams. And while it's bad for the White Sox, I think it's good for baseball and it's good for baseball fans. Bart, Jose um, Ramirez, Tim Anderson situation and what has come from it is actually a good thing for Major League Baseball? Mm-hmm or mm-mm? I understand baseball taking advantage of the situation. I still don't like that in sports you can just fight someone and – they committed a crime. That was a crime. That was a crime. This is such a soy boy take. It's, it's not a soy boy take. It is. No, it's not. I don't understand how, I like, even in hockey, there's like, all right, let's fight. What the, what is happening? These, these guys are fighting. He squared up. He got knocked out. He did. And if that would have happened a hundred yards that way in the stands, the guy's going to jail. You sound like Jerry Seinfeld right now is both in delivery and in content. <laughs> it's just not fair. You can't like the one guy fought in the stands. He lost his job at Fox six. He had to go pretend to care about Madison for two years before he got hired back here. Come on. Well, I'm right. It did happen. Yeah. You think he wanted to work in Madison? No. <laughs> he didn't want to leave. He had no choice. I, I guess I get what you're saying. I just, it's such a weird, but that's also why I love you, Bart, is you're like, hey, this one thing that no one else is thinking, I'm going to make this take my entire person. I don't understand how, like, you know, and then the announcer's like, down goes Anderson and it goes viral. I, I do get like, okay, I do get the funniness of it, the memes of it, the announcer, you know, going all crazy about it. And uh, I, I get it. I just, 
I don't get how fights are allowed in the they're, fight. They were suspended. They're not allowed. They were both ejected and they were both suspended. They're, he's missing less games than a pitcher would miss if he had. No, 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 no. Tim Anderson got six. Yeah, but pitchers always get 10 games, or aka f- two starts. I guess. I like I that think- Anderson lost the fight and got double the amount of games. Dude. Like <laughs> and then and then on Monday the story came out the Yasmani Grandal piece of this. Did you read that? No. That I Come think it, I, I hope I don't mix this up, but it was something like um someone wanted to go home early before the all-star break, and Tim Anderson said, Well, if he wants to leave, then fuck him. To which Yasmani Grandal walked over to Tim Anderson in his little space in his cubby of his locker room and smacked him on the head in front of the entire team. Grandal did that to his teammate, Tim Anderson. And Tim Anderson just kind of had to sit there and take it. Um, Rough, rough year overall for Tim Anderson. Rough week. But, you know, like, the reason I ask this question is, you know, when I would go to Admirals games as a kid, I didn't know hockey. I didn't play hockey. I didn't like fighting. I'm anti-fighting. I don't, I've never been in a fight. I'm never going to be in a fight. I, not my thing in any way, shape, or form. But damn it, if I didn't want to see the hockey guys fight each other, and if they didn't, I was like, ah, oh, like that wasn't the best game today. Yeah, but the Admirals won 6-0. Yeah, but like, you know, no one took off their gloves and punched each other. Um, it's a weird take. I'm not proud of the take. It is, in fact, the way that I felt as a kid. And like, If you didn't send or didn't receive one of the either the real version of Jose Ramirez knocking out Tim Anderson or one of the memes or gifts of it in a text chat with buddies, then you're not (laughs) and you don't have sports fans in your life like that was you. You talked about this with your friends like you mentioned this. You showed this. You this was a thing. And Jose Ramirez then posing in boxing gloves and all of the. I do think like, you know, like if the commissioner was to be interviewed about it, like, what do you, what do you make of the increased interest during those three days? And like the, 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 all of the search terms went way up and a lot of people, more people were talking about baseball that week. What do you think about that? And he would say, well, you know, I, we did, we would never condone it, blah, blah. And the back of his head, he's like, in the back of his head, he's like, fucking do it again. You know, he can't say that. He wouldn't say that. It was a little haughty there. I was going to say the same thing. <laughs> we should never condone. What, Craig, 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 did you, would you, well, have you ever been compelled to, to take off your gloves and fight? <laughs> Who does that venture into when you start to go fight? Who, uh, um, I know it, it ventures into, uh, it ventures into, God, because I, I just thought of it too. Adventures into five. No, it's it's not South Park. It's, no, I know, but we've talked about that. But there's something else in there that I can't quite find. Oh, it's uh, it's it's um, adventures into the guy from Knives Out. <gasps> oh my, you're so right. Yeah, the fight. Yeah. Oh, that's brilliant. That's what adventures into. Grant, you've seen these movies. I know the main guy is that who you're yeah. talking about? Yeah, with his interesting accent. We yeah. need to get all this information to Caliendo. We hold the keys to the kingdom. In terms oh of my goodness! Impression. Thank well, you for little Mr. Mackey. It's a little. It's a little. Benoit Blanc. Yeah, LeBlanc. If you're gonna okay. fight, you venture into the fight. That yeah. Oh, wonderful! That's the guy who goes. It's just dumb, right? That guy. <laughs> that guy. Yeah. That was the the you know the gif or the clip that people you've seen the movies though they're they're great movies guys I just can't I mean Janelle Monet is the hottest woman that's ever lived I just really think so I didn't, I didn't hear what you said Can Janelle you... Monet is the hottest woman that's ever oh. lived OmahaStakes.com go there there's, there's a segue and use the promo code Bart. For great deals. <laughs> Just a 10 second read today for them. Just buy some steaks, man. Put the code Bart in and buy some steaks. I don't know if anyone's going to show up at the tailgate that we're doing 
with Omaha Steaks. I think maybe that's more reserved for a nice family outing to get mm. that, that delicious tenderloin. But if you do order the package they, that, that's available, they do send you eight free burgers. That'd be good to bring for the tailgate. I'm rolling in with apple tartlets to the tailgate. All the apple tartlets. Yeah, I wish you were gone. Are you going? I really want to. Are you going to take off to go? Taking a vacation day, it's a tough, you know, you, well. I know. Paul, you you might get it. It's, you just, every time you take a vacation day, you lose a little bit of respect from the coworkers and from your boss. Just a little Oh, little no, 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 no. Bad take. Boo. You do. No, you I, I don't want to be right. You're I'm not right. You're wrong. I'm right. No, you're no, 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 no. You earn those days. You need those days. I always, I always use the days. Um, I always use no. Days. Do not feel guilty about that. I, I, I regret. I only took two weeks of paternity leave when I was offered four. Is someone giving birth at the Brewer game? Huh. What? My my point is that's di- my point is that's different. No, but I, I, I son, yes. No, I'm like I fuck. That's a bad thing I did as a dad. But it was I mean it was right at the time we got a new boss. I was like shit. So you're saying you should have taken more weeks? Yeah, I should take it all four. You could have had four and you didn't take them. Yeah, that was dumb. Two. Yeah. That was dumb. I just take because you know what. Guess what happened in the end of that? None of it mattered. The cup, the station gets shut down. It was dumb. Always use, always use your days. Focus on you. There's, yeah, there's companies like, are always like, here are the benefits to get you um, wanting this job. You get twenty days off. And we're happily give them to you. Never use any of them. You're fucking committed to us. Don't do it, Grant. Maybe but it's it is you. wildly different in radio. Using a vacation day. No, I, I think it's true anywhere. I think a lot of people feel guilt about it. I it's, think it's, I, it's, it's a lot harder to take a vacation day when you're taking off from the Bart Winkler show. Yeah, I, I get that. Because I think, I remember, Bart, you would, if you missed two days, people would literally think you were suspended. Yeah. Every time. Like, Bart took a, took a four-day weekend. It's like, yeah, you know why? It's because that thing he said on Wednesday. And they're not going to announce that he's suspended. talking about the Braves' dead relatives throwing out the first pitch. That's pretty funny, actually. And that's got to get him suspended for two. I mean, it was without fail. It would be like the people would. Yeah. All right. Um, here's a topic I guarantee you were not expecting. How's that for a tease? Guarantee uh, you're I mean, not, expecting. not expecting it. Expecting what? I'm pretty grind up. <laughs> I've never heard anyone say that before. I've never <laughs> no, not it. It. But you know what it means. Totally know I what do. it means. That's funny. Nearly everyone. It's, I'm not saying that I have an erection. I'm saying that I'm like ticklish in the groin. Yeah. All right. I could have done without the explainer. Nearly everyone who's watching Messi will stop watching MLS once he's gone. In other words, huge initial boost. No one will st- – not no one. All one. Oh, I have suddenly muted you to cough. Uh, okay. You're I saw the host has muted your mic and then unmuted my mic. Sorry. So there's this huge boost. And so w- the reason I asked this question is uh, I saw the other day Messi was removed with like 10 minutes to go and everyone left. And everyone was like, the, the Twitter stuff was like surprised, like, oh, like even the hometown fans are leaving. They're like, yes, the hometowns are fans leaving because no one gives a fuck about the hometown team. They're there to see Messi. Once he's gone, they're gone. This isn't going to, in my opinion, this isn't going to like boost season tickets across the league or for each individual team. It's going to be a short term boost. When he's gone, they're gone, is my opinion. So I'm curious if you agree. Once, you know, nearly everyone who's tuned into MLS as a result of wanting to watch Messi, the vast, vast, vast majority will leave and not watch once he's gone. Mm Mm-hmm or mm mm-mm. I suppose I'll answer this first. That makes sense. Uh, I I understand what you're saying. And I think there's going to be a lot of people that watch Messi that... All right, like I'll, I'll tell you about me. 
I did everything I could to watch those first two games without paying for Apple, the MLS package. Sure. And then I fucking bought it because I had to, I have to see this. Yep. Uh, the game after that, there was a third game. They won again. Messi was fucking amazing. Then they played Dallas on Sunday in Dallas. So his first road game play sells out. It's like one of the most captivating soccer games I've ever seen. Sure. It was unbelievable. And if you're like, buy $40 to watch this game for the first time experience as a soccer fan, I would, I would, I would always do it. Sure. For that game. They're down 4 2. They're playing like dog shit. Messi then, Messi has this free kick that gets headed by the other team as an own goal. But it, it, you know, own goals are like, oh my God, what have I done? This guy looked like he was trying to score off an assist from Messi. It was so fucked <laughs> up. And then Messi has the free kick. And then Messi takes it. It was great. Mm-hmm. And now they play Friday night again. And I'm excited. So I'm going to watch every time he's on. Yeah, but totally. I bought it for Messi. I didn't really buy it for the rest of the MLS. Right. I don't know how much of the rest of the MLS I'm going to watch. If there's important games or playoff games or I'm bored or, you know, I, I cheer for the Timbers, I guess. I'll, I'll maybe watch them if, you know, if whatever. But this is more of a, like, this only happened now because David Beckham came 16 years ago. Sure. If that doesn't happen... He doesn't open the door. He doesn't get an ownership stake. He doesn't then want to bring Messi over. So Messi coming here is hopefully going to bring like more people over in some sort of way. Or Oh, I see he, what you're saying. He has taken the, the profile of the league because a lot of these subscriptions, like Apple, Apple, they lucked into Messi, but it played perfect for them. They don't just have the American rights to this league. Okay. They have the worldwide rights. Worldwide exclusivity. Okay. So if you want to watch MLS in any other country, you have to watch it through Apple. Here's a fun fact for you. One of the big reasons Apple is so invested in MLS is because in Latin America, Apple phones. I was listening to a podcast on this. I think Andrew Marchand's podcast. App, Apple phones are the fourth highest selling phone. Wow. Yeah. It's, it's. I don't even know three others. I don't know three others either. So they're trying to bolster. This isn't about Apple TV Plus. This is about getting more Apple products into <clears throat> Latin and South America. Okay. And now those people are buying this package to watch Messi. So I think all this has worked all the way around and Messi delivering these insane moments is great. But next year, I mean, I already put a note in my phone for when the MLS season ends, cancel MLS. So I don't know. So that's my long answer. Well, Grant, obviously I want to get your take. I I think you made a lot of good points, but you still ended up where – I ended up, which is like, if you're looking at like, well, it depends. It depends, Paul. Cause like wrestling, I saw that match between Shawn Michaels and undertaker hundred percent. And I'm like, I want this whole sport. I want this in my life. So if some people are like, but that was me coming into a new thing. People that are buying this or watching Messi already like soccer. It's not like, Oh, I'll just check out this messy guy. Oh, this is pretty cool. I never see soccer before. They're not doing that. Yeah. And I don't know, like, so MLS has to show itself off as a league. And maybe, like, the game on Sunday was bonkers. If I watched that game on Sunday between Dallas and Miami and had never seen MLS play before, I'm like, holy shit, this league isn't like the Premier League, but. It's fucking bonkers, and it was fun to watch, and maybe I'll watch another game. Maybe I'll check out – but the problem is they'll check out, like, a Revolution Red Bulls game, right. and it'll be the shittiest 0-0 game you ever did see. And I think that's what I was going to say. So the I was going to use either the wrestling example or the fact that, like, when the Brewers got CeCe Sabathia, the attendance the rest of the year, and then, you know, like, 
some portion of the people who were not going to Brewers games, who then started going to Brewers games, kept going to Brewers games, right? Even after CeCe Sabathia was gone or after the, the 2011 season and then they had this down period. Some people who came during like the Niger Morgan hit era stayed, but most didn't. But like in wrestling, some people are going to watch Bret Hart, Undertaker, or Shawn Michaels, whatever, whichever match it was, Shawn Michaels, Undertaker, and they're going to say, oh, I need this. But then, Bart, if like the next 10 matches you watched – were terrible and like yeah, not even chorus dancing. Yeah, right. Um, then you know, some people will say, Okay, well, I guess I don't actually like pro wrestling, I just like this one match. And some people keep staying. I would venture to say, like, I'm gonna try to describe this as like a, a graph. If the interest in MLS is at the one level, you know, so it's one, 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 interest is at a one, and then it spikes to 10 between. July of 2023 and I don't know, December of 2023. I'm not saying it's going to go all the way back down to one post Messi, but it's going to go down to like 1.2. And then it's going to do another straight line, straight line, straight line. Like a small portion, I think 5% will stay and say, you know what? I just like soccer now. Just like you said, well, never mind. I don't just like Shawn Michaels Undertaker. I like wrestling. Some people are going to say that I think with MLS, I think the 95% plus. If Messi checks out the game, they're leaving the stadium. If he's no longer yeah. in the league, they're unsubscribing. So as a business model, it still makes sense to your point about getting more Apple products, but that doesn't make it good for MLS. I mean, it's great for MLS, right? But like the vast majority of these people are not going to be like, I love MLS now. No, <laughs> you're here to watch Messi and then you're leaving the second he's gone is my opinion. Grant Bills, your thoughts. Well, I mean, I don't have a ton to say about MLS. I find the fact that Apple is the carrier really interesting because Apple and Apple TV, their platform is different than Netflix and Hulu and Disney Plus and that Apple does not rely on Apple TV subscriptions to drive their business at all. It's so far down the list of things that actually need to make money for them, whereas Netflix and, and Disney Plus, like these streaming libraries, these streaming platforms are such a big part of what drives their business. It's for a lot of these brands, it's what drives their business completely. Apple can afford the churn, right? Apple can afford to get these influx of subscribers and then lose the, the subscribers at some point, which is what is killing Disney plus and Hulu and a lot of these other platforms. It's not getting the subscriptions. That's the difficult part. It's, it's keeping them. It's expensive to, to churn and to have to keep getting people. And it doesn't matter for Apple. Like Apple TV gets them in the space of the MLS. It gets them, phones in Central America, for example, which I didn't know. That's really interesting. And it gets yeah. Tim Cook into the Hollywood space and it gets Apple into those rooms, which is a place that Apple wouldn't be without Apple TV Plus. So it's it's interesting that Apple can say, well, we'll invest in this and it looks really good. And it doesn't necessarily need to make us a ton of money over a five-year window. If we get a ton of subscribers and it burns really hot for a while, that's fine. Whereas that that approach might not work for other streaming providers, which I find very interesting. And I think your graph analogy is a good one. If it's at 10 or if it's at one and it goes up to a 10 and it comes back down to a two at the end of this, MLS is still in a better spot than it was before. Totally. And, I, and I like the idea of Messi showed that you can come to America and make it work. And, yeah. and hopefully that leads to the next guy and the next guy. So whereas if Messi leaves, MLS might not still be as big of a deal. It won't still be as big of a deal, but the door is wide open for the same thing to keep happening with other stars. And I think that's cool. Bart, you would know the answer to this far better than we would. Who? Maybe it's in two years. Maybe it's right now. Maybe it's in five years. Is there another name that even carries seventy percent of the weight that Beckham did in two thousand seven? That Messi uh, doesn't. Kylian Mbappe. Oh yeah. Okay. Yep. I saw. And is he? Did he take that one point two billion dollar deal? Yeah. He... So that's still out there. Yeah, and so people are like, "Well, MLS could get him," but the way that they got Messi, like. Messi's getting paid from Apple. The the contract they broke every rule that they would have <laughs> to get this guy over here. And yeah. I don't know how they would do it for Mbappe. Who does he play for? Mbappe. PSG. Play for Par yeah, yeah. Thank you, Jesus fucking Christ. <laughs> Which stands for Paris Saint Germain. That's one of the few things I know about soccer. Look at you. No. It stands for. Paul, Paul is on Grant. 
Sure. Nice. Yeah. I like that. I'm very, I like the sports topics that are like sports adjacent. Like I've mm-hmm. been really, into- I like, like, uh, I like, like the stuff, like, where do you put your bread? Do you put it in your fridge or on top of your That's not uh, refrigerator? I like, like what day of the week is best. I like, like, you know, uh, what's your favorite band and when'd you get your first blow job? Just things that are like, not really sports. I like those. I was, I was thinking more like, like college football realignment. I think it's really interesting because it has ramifications for television networks and for the size of the playoff and all these different things that aren't necessarily related to the games. And that's where college football loses me sometimes is I don't love spending my entire Saturday watching a lot of games that sometimes suck, like Ohio State beating Maryland 70 to 6. But so as someone who does, oh, I'm sorry. No, I, like, someone- I, I like the topics that are these, we, like Apple TV and the subscriber. Like that's very interesting to me, even though I'm not a big soccer guy. Yeah, I'm not either. But I just found this whole – I mean, this has been a fascinating time period to, to watch that happen. Here's my – this was not a planned question, and it's not even an mm-hmm question. Don't you have to go? I do have to go. Uh, two minutes. Um, the I, I don't know who's in the Big Ten. I don't watch college sports. I'm not a college <laughs> sports guy. I I do not know who's in the Big Ten. Who's in the Big Ten? So USC and someone – You know who's in the Big Ten. It's the name of a kid's book. Who's in the big? T- I can see the illustration on the cover. So, who was the other team that joined with USC like a year or so ago? UCLA. UCLA. And now, are there new teams that joined? Come on, I'm not kidding. I see, I see college stuff, and I see, I just zoom, I just completely zone around. Oregon, Oregon and Washington. And, Washington. and now, are there 14 teams with those two, or 16? 18. 18. 18. Other than the 10 or 11 that I knew growing up, plus those four, who are the other three? Maryland? Yeah. Rutgers. Rutgers. Nebraska. 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 And wait, okay, now I have to ask you. You can do it really quick, and then I'm going to go. They should change the – Grand, I think I saw your tweet on this. They should no. change the name of the Big Ten. Mm-hmm, or no. mm, now that there's fucking no. 18 goddamn teams. No. No, they should not change the name of the Big Ten. Why? It should stay the same because one day – I want to have the opportunity as a dad to be like, I remember when the Big Ten was actually 10 teams. And then <laughs> I want to be able to explain to my kid what happened. And I want they I want my kids to be like, that doesn't make sense. And I'll be like, oh, you just don't know shit about anything. You little, you know, you're basically a bump on a log, you little, little tyke. Like, I want the opportunity as a dad to have that conversation. They can't change it. And how many teams will be in the Big Ten by the time, like, 29 teams and it's the Big Ten. It's stupid. It's probably going to be just Big Ten SEC at some point. Probably. Okay. All right. Well, if you're going to go, I Grant, can I talk to you for that for five minutes? I was going to say, we can get Bart, we can keep going. All right. Be well. All right. Paul Emig. Is that yeah. the wrap on him? I love that we explained, to, like, the last two minutes was us just explaining to Paul all the teams. If he had game. more time, I would have done, like, West Virginia and had him guess the conference. I know we didn't. Yeah, we didn't have time. I would have uh, loved so, to listen to him just guess aimlessly until he got it. But I would have done it. I think so. One of the things that I think everybody looks at right away with college realignment, just from a football standpoint, like this fucks so many people over. I won't talk about that right now. From a football standpoint, you're getting. Oregon versus Rutgers. You're getting UCF versus Arizona State. But you're getting Texas, Texas A&M back in the SEC. You're getting Oklahoma, Missouri back. You're getting, um, like, it with these four-pack 12 schools, it's weird, but you're getting a lot of great Rose Bowl rematches. You're getting... Uh, Utah and BYU is a power five rivalry that's already been a rivalry. So you are getting like, there are cool things that are happening. I still think college loses its luster when it's not as regional for, for now, for yeah. now, Stanford and California be like, what do we do? They can't be in the ACC, man. No. So I don't, I, I just, I don't think like I, the the biggest problem with realignment for me 
is it's never fucking ending. Uh huh. Well, and that's and, why your boy that you had on, um, Chip Mc, Chip McAllister, Chip what was his name? Chip Chip Patterson. Chip Patterson. He on his podcast the other day that they did about realignment. He's like, we need to stop using the word stability. That was a pet peeve of his that they were talking about. This might be the situation for two years or four years or maybe even six years. But the idea that Oregon is going to the Big Ten simply so they can have stability and it'll stay, it's never going to end. You're right. No, they're chasing the buck they can get right now. Yeah. And and I think it's going to funnel. I think we – like so we saw Big 8, Southwest, Pac-12 or 10, Big 10, SEC – we funneled, lost the Big East. We're funneling, losing the Pac-12. We're going to keep funneling and eventually be two power conferences of 30 teams each. Probably. The Confederacy and the Union. <laughs> That'd be pretty funny. And it, and it's fine. You know, we're losing a little bit of the regionality, which is totally one of the defining factors. Now, all of this is fine. It's not. I don't think it's life or death for a lot of... We're not going to lose the Civil War or the Apple Cup. We're not going to lose, like these teams have already come out and say, we're, we're going to keep the rivalries. We're going to keep playing them. That's un, that's one of the advantages of college football. There are no rules. Now, that means you can leave conferences at any point. You can move around. But also, we'll, we'll just go be in the Big Ten, but we'll still do the Civil War. Who says we can't? We can schedule. No, and there'll the be conference. these two power conferences, and there'll still be Notre Dame. Yeah. Like, it, like we can yeah. still do the this. Lack, the lack of... The lack of it making any fucking sense yeah. is like a positive for college. It's, it's the reason that this is happening, but it's also the reason that it's fine is because Oregon's like, well, we'll change conferences, but we'll still do the Civil War. I mean, we'll figure out a way or, or why not? You know, we'll still go to Iowa always plays yeah. Iowa State. Yeah, Florida always plays Florida State. Yep, totally. I think, and I brought this up on my Monday show, I think it's really funny that Oregon and Washington are, are moving conferences. They're going to the Big Ten. And I turn on you know, people like Colin Cowherd, and they're like, well, Oregon and Washington, they fit the brand of the Big Ten. State schools, academic, right? Like, we break this down. Like, these schools have personalities, and these towns have personalities, and they're designed to fit in conferences with, with corresponding schools. I think it's so funny. It's such an outrageous sport. I just wish I liked watching the games more. I wish well, I could you gotta sit play down. Draft, you got to get into the DraftKings. Maybe. I, I can't sit down when it's beautiful outside in the fall and spend an entire Saturday watching college football. That's all I, I want to do. I don't think I'll ever be able to do it. The, I love it. I love stuff like this. I love, co I love stories like this that don't require me to sit down for 11 hours and watch college football. For an entire but season. a big reason I love it is I get really nerdy. I've always wanted to make a 64 team bracket and show like how we got to the final four by using different matchups that happened throughout the season and do that at the end of the season. But I, I never end up doing it, but I like the, the, the playoffs, every game like has some sort of, and we're going to lose that now. I here's, here's the bummer. The playoff is expanding and it's because of money and I'm not an idiot and I'm not going to be like, this is just one big cash grab. No shit. Of course it is like yeah, no good, shit. good job for putting that together. So everyone who's ranting about that, well, of course it's about money. I don't love that the playoff is expanding because I feel like we're going to lose some urgency in the regular season. And that urgency is some of the, you know, part of that. That's the only reason I watch some college football games in the season is when Alabama and Tennessee meet up on a Saturday night in a game that everyone's had circled for weeks. I know when I'm watching that game that the loser is kind of boned. The loser is is out, and only one team can advance and still have a legitimate shot at the playoffs. And if that goes away, I don't know that I love college football enough to still watch some of those games. I need the stakes to feel massive, and I don't know if they're still going to when we expand the playoffs to eight teams or twelve teams or however many we eventually. You know what stakes are massive? Omaha stakes. Omaha stakes. Yeah, they're big. Thanks, Grant. Thanks to Paul. Um, yeah, I, I guess uh, I guess this is the end of the show. Good luck uh, with the Steve this week. Also, I wanted to tell you that I was driving back from vacation on Saturday. We had a 15-hour drive, and I did force my road trip buddy to listen to an old hour of Take Me Out to the Paul game. Did he like it? I don't know that he did. I think he enjoyed trivia because we were road tripping and – and it was interactive and we did it along. 
the, the trivia didn't start till the bottom of the hour. I made him listen to the first half hour. I'm dying at all the bits and the, the hell yeah, all sports. My wife makes me listen in the car <laughs> and I keep wanting to pause it and explain it to him. But I'm like, if I do that, it's going to be even worse for him. I just need to let this roll. What do you get? It was like 2005, 2006 were the years. But, and you know some of those songs. So whatever. Well, hey, good for everyone involved. <laughs>